without faith it's impossible to please God. We are supposed to be a people who walk not by sight, but by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We are supposed to act based on what we have heard from God. You know, I, I was having this conversation yesterday with Robert. We were talking about giving thanks and everything. And I said, if you look at the Red Sea, at the Red Sea, the people of God, the people of God who had seen the mighty hand of God as he brought these plagues upon Egypt to set them free. Now they're mumbling and grumbling and groaning and complaining because they're confronted with the, the Red Sea. Again. And Moses says, stand by and see the salvation of God. But they're mumbling and grumbling and groaning. God parts the water. They get to the other side. God closes the water in on the Pharaoh's armies. Right? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it says they sang and they danced and they had a jubilee. Well, that sounds nice. And it is. I mean, thank God. We should be giving thanks for what he has done. But I promise you that we better be giving thanks for what he will do. Before those waters Before parted. the waters parted. They should have sang and danced and had a jubilee on the other side Thank of the Red you. Sea. Thank you. Because he had spoken it. And once he speaks it, it is a done deal. If you believe him. Right. If you trust him. If you have faith. But if you have to wait to see the results before you'll give thanks. You have a problem. Yes. You have a problem because you are not walking in faith. You are responding to what you have sight. seen. That is not Faith. Go read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. Because you've heard from God and you trust Him. Yes. And again, I'm going to go back. That's what the core of this letter to the Romans is. It's chapter 8. Where, where this is, Paul knows that nothing can separate him from the love of God. Mm -hmm. That if God is for him, nobody can be against him. It, it all goes back to this trust in God. Mm -hmm. Because that's what's pleasing to God. Let me tell you something. Jesus said it. And, and these are the days we better be thinking about it and looking at it. Jesus did not say, when I come back, am I going to find big fancy church buildings? That's not what he said. He said, when, I, when, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he find a people who are responding to his word, living by his word, acting according to what he has spoken or not? That's the question. That's the question he asked, not me. We have to get to this place, all right? We need to be giving thanks for what, he, what he's doing. If it, did, if it is direction by circumstance, you have to be giving thanks no matter what goes on because you have to be trusting that God watches over his word to perform it. No matter what's going on in your life, he said that he would lead you in paths of righteousness. If you are submitted to God, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the devil throws at you, God is in control. Yes, He is. God is in control. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, this battle between right and wrong, this battle between good and evil is often portrayed as a battle between equals. It is not. And the first thing you need to know about that battle is it's done. It's already over. It's over. Jesus Christ hung on the cross and said, it is finished. The devil has been defeated. That's what the Word of God says. He has it's been disarmed. Satan has no authority or power over you. Yeah. Believer, no. whatsoever. Listen to me. If you're sitting out there and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're in serious trouble. Yes. You're, you're in serious trouble. And there's only one way out. And it's not going to be President Obama that's that one way out. It's not going to be a government. It's not going to be a bank. It's not going to be a doctor. It's not going to be a lawyer. The only way out is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. So you need to turn your life over because otherwise Satan is in control of your life. You are bound to him. You are in, sub you are in slavery to him. And you know, Alice and I were talking about this today and I said, you know, it's, maybe it's time that we started getting in people's faces a little more and saying, Jesus Christ said, you are either for me or you are against me. Life or death. It is. You know, uh, this is not a game. It really is not a game. This is a matter of life and death. We have turned religion into some kind of pomp and ceremony. Well, just like they did back in ancient Babylon and ever since. But what we're talking about is a matter of life and death, eternal life and death. That's right. That's right. And we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Forget their feelings. Mm -hmm. Their feelings have to die. We need to tell people, boldly tell people, the good news of Jesus Christ. That he died this horrible, horrific death. 
nailed to a cross like a common criminal. And you know it says in Isaiah 53 that he had no appearance that we should be attracted to him. It is that horror of the cross that reveals the glory of God and the love of God. We're, we're doing everything to make Christianity pretty. When in fact, it is that, like I said, it's that horror that reveals the glory and the beauty. On a hill, far away, stood an old lovely cross, a symbol of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of all sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross.